主それは命与える救いの Today's scripture is 1st Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag, and is not arrogant. Amen. After the Golden Light Choir's praise, we will listen to Senior Pastor's lecture on spiritual love. Brothers and sisters, this is the seventh session of the lectures on spiritual love. In the previous sessions, you heard the significance of love in our believing lives and why love is the greatest. From today, I will explain about the concept of love, that is, the general idea of what love is. Of course, it is spiritual love that you eagerly long to accomplish. Many people in the world want to have true love but fail to experience the joy of true love because they do not know what the true love is like. Some people doubt the existence of true love, so they do not accept the grace of salvation that our Lord has given to us. Rather, some people persecute those who preach, preach the gospel. These things prove that now is the end time and true love is hardly found anywhere. But you have learned about true love, namely spiritual love, through the Word of God who is love itself. As Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You can feel the love of God through the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Through today's message, may all of you clearly understand what spiritual love is and feel that love in your heart. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you may determine to achieve this spiritual love and accomplish it in your heart quickly, so that those who are thirsty for true love feel spiritual love through you. Brothers and sisters, today's scripture says, love is patient. So, what are you to be patient with? First of all, you have to be patient in the various trials through which you have to pass in accomplishing true love and be patient with yourself. Sometimes you find that when you try to love someone, the person throws a stone back at you. Then you might think, that it is impossible to love those people. If you want to accomplish spiritual love, you have to be patient with even those people. Even if someone slanders and hates you for no reason, you have to love him with patience. Thus, when you obey the word of God and try to love others, you should be patient with all kinds of trials. This is spiritual love with patience. What you need to know is the difference between being patient with spiritual love and being patient as the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 says, but the fruit, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law. Here, patience is one of the nine fruits of the Spirit that urges you to be patient in everything for the kingdom and righteousness of God. 
That is why this patience is a broader sense of patience than the patience from spiritual love. That is necessary for you to personally love others. The patience that is one of the nine fruits of the Spirit can be divided into three categories. The first category is to be patient in throwing away untruth and cultivating the heart by truth. How patient you have to be to throw away the entire untruth you have stored until you meet the Lord. Each person has a different type of heart field. Some are born with good heart field. Their parents were good hearted and they inherited their parents' goodness. Also, they grew up not seeing evil things. So there are people whose heart field is good soil. Then there are thorny field, rocky field, and roadside field. Our Lord categorized our hearts into four different sections. If one has roadside heart field, no matter how many times he hears the truth, he cannot take in the truth. He does not change, so it's difficult for him to receive salvation. Among the twelve disciples of the Lord, Judas Iscariot didn't change his heart, even if he saw the works of God. Eventually, he sold his teacher at a small amount of money. money. His heart was like roadside, and he didn't change, even though he saw many signs, wonders, and the power of God. There is a heart field with which one can never achieve a heart of spirit, but only stay in the flesh. It's rare, though. Rocky field can change into a better type of field. If one listens to the Word of God, tries to change, endures, and resists against, against sins to the point of shedding blood, Furthermore, he can have good heart field. You must change your heart field to good soil. If you have good soil, you can accept the truth, saying only yes and amen. If someone whose heart field is good soil accepts the Lord, he says only yes and amen. Therefore, the person can achieve a heart of spirit and whole spirit quickly. I can rarely see good soil among you. Even if one has lived in the untruth, since he has good heart field, he can throw away all the evil from the moment he hears the truth. He will do what he is told to do. He will not do what he is told not to do. He will keep what he is told to keep. And he will throw away what he is told to throw away. He is the person who can enter spirit and hold spirit quickly. So until you change into the heart of good soil, you have to be patient and march on. The second category is to be patient in understanding others who are different from you, seeking their benefits and living at peace with them. It says understanding others who are different from you. Even when you understand others, there is no ill feelings or hatred. You don't see others from your viewpoint, but you understand them in their shoes. If you think with goodness, who in the world can you not understand? You can understand anyone. You can seek others' benefit. You think their benefits first, not yours. This is the patience to accomplish peace. The last category is to be patient until you receive the promises of God. This includes receiving the answers to your prayers and salvation. You have to patiently wait without wavering until you receive His answers. Patience from the chapter on love explains that you should love others, so it is included in the patience that is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Some verses seem to have the same meanings, but those meanings can be interpreted differently by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit.
If you understand this difference and properly apply this to each situation, you can gain greater benefits in your believing life. There is a phrase in the beginning in the book of Genesis chapter 1 as well as John chapter 1, but I said they have different meanings. In the beginning of Genesis is the time when Father God created the heavens and the earth, but in the beginning of the first chapter of John is the time before everything was created. Now let us look into patience in detail. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, Jesus told us, Love your enemies. Who said this? Our Lord said so. Love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Are you doing so? I don't think you have an enemy, but if you have an enemy, do you love your enemy? Do you pray for those who persecute you? I've lived like that. Even if someone tried to kill me, betrayed me, or wrongfully accused me, I didn't hate them. No matter how much they persecuted me, I prayed for them to repent and to be saved, and I didn't hate them but prayed for their blessings. I've never prayed that Father God, they make things difficult and give me a hard time. Please punish them. I've always prayed for them from the heart. You must have that kind of love and you must become like that. Then you can make peace with everyone and achieve a heart of spirit and whole spirit. Who is your enemy? The lexical meaning of enemy is a person who is actively opposed or is hostile to someone or something. Can you love your enemy? Can you pray for those who unreasonably hurl curses at you and persecute you because you preach the gospel? Our Lord Jesus came down to the earth for sinners and He told us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. I, think who, I thank those who keep saying Amen. Who is the enemy of Jesus? The enemy is the, the evil forces of darkness and sinners who obey them. In that sense, you used to be the enemy of Jesus before you accepted Him as the Savior. Since Adam sinned, all men have been obedient to the evil, the enemy, de enemy devil. By committing sins, we became the children of the devil. And we continued to sin, which was against the will of God. Jesus came down to the earth to save mankind. But what did they do? Jesus preached the gospel of heaven and practiced love by healing the sick and sharing food. He did only good things. Nonetheless, because they were unable to realize that Jesus took the burdens of all their sins, they crucified Jesus, who did only good things. They humiliated Jesus and crucified Him. They said to Jesus, if you have power to revive the dead, why don't you come down from the cross? Then we will believe in you. The servants of the priests slapped him on the cheek, spat on his face, and ridiculed Jesus. Jesus endured them quietly and prayed for them, as said in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. He prayed for them, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus offered up a prayer of intercession. When the Lord entered Jerusalem, they shouted Hosanna, took off their coats, and spread it on the road. But they changed all at once and insisted on hanging him on the cross. Nevertheless, our Lord prayed to Father God to forgive them. 
Our Lord Jesus was long patient with mankind who was the enemy of God, and He loved us. Eventually, what happened? Anyone who believes in Jesus as the Savior and accepts Him is released from the slavery of the devil and becomes children of God. Thus, the power of the love with patience is so great. Then how patient are you? Are you patient with those who slander you and love them? Or are you having difficulty in being patient with your wife, husband, children, and brothers and sisters in Christ? When I heard that some siblings argued over money and became enemies, although they say they are believers, I felt so sorry. Matthew chapter 5 verses 39 and 40 say, But I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. What kind of person on earth would ask you for your shirt? But the Bible tells us to give it to him and also give your coat to him. It is adding love to love. These days, many people easily sue others when other people cause even the slightest harm or loss to them. Sometimes they accuse their wives, husbands, parents, and children. If they are patient and stay silent, they may be considered as fools by the people around them. But our Lord tells us to turn your left cheek when someone slaps on your right cheek. And if he wants to sue you and take your shirt, give him your coat as well. If someone slapped you on the right cheek, would it hurt that much to be slapped on your left cheek? Even if you are slapped, if you can make peace with others, wouldn't it be better? He urges us not to pay back evil for evil, but to be patient and treat others with goodness. Would any of you say you cannot do that if the charges are false? But if you have faith and love, you can do it. What is it that you must have faith in? You have to believe in the love of God the Father who was patient with you and had mercy on you and who crucified His only Son, Jesus. If you really believe that you have received such great love from God, you can forgive and accept the one who has caused even the most serious harm to you. Moreover, we received such great love from the Almighty God, who is goodness itself and spotless and sinless. Who can we not love? We have to be in peace with all men. Even if I've preached the word of truth so many times, when I see those who still have flesh and anger and live in the untruth, it is heartbreaking. If you're going to spirit, it is a great blessing. You can dwell in a better place in heaven. You won't get sick and have accidents or disasters. Even if I've taught the word of God so many times, you don't choose the truth but the untruth that leads you to hell. How pitiful it is. Would you choose hell just because you want to experience the pleasure of the world? What would God say about this? He would say it is so foolish. If you love our God who has loved you to the point of abandoning His only Son, and if you love our Lord who laid down His life for you, there is no one whom you cannot love. Then how long do you have to be patient? 
Some of you may have struggled to suppress your anger, hatred, hot tempers until you burst into those emotions when you reach the limit of your patience. If you are introverted, you do not express your emotions but severely suffer from those whom you hate, then you might end up having a mental disease caused by stress. When I lead the divine healing meeting, I sometimes hear about diseases caused by anger. Well, I've been humiliated by many people. If I easily get the anger disease, I could have severe anger diseases. Why do you get an anger disease? That is just our loss. If you temporarily suppress your anger, it is like a spring that returns to the previous position after being released. Have you ever pushed down a spring? Once you push down a spring and let your hand go, it returns to where it was. This kind of patience is useless. The patience that our Lord wants you to have is the patience with which you endure to the last moment. When you do not store hatred and ill feelings, but instead throw away the roots of evils that cause ill feelings so that you fill your heart with mercy and love and possess spiritual patience. What I want to say is not just to suppress the untruthful attributes. It's the patience that is needed for you to cast them off. Then you don't need to be patient at all. If you have completely cast off all kinds of untruthful attributes and fill your heart with spiritual love alone by accomplishing a heart of spirit, it will never be hard to love your enemies. On the contrary, if your heart is filled with untruthful attributes such as hatred, dissension, envy, and jealousy, you will see only weak points of others and hate them. It is just like everything you see looks dark when you wear black glasses. Bl blue glasses make everything you see look blue. What about white glasses? Then things will look white when you wear white glasses. Everything you see looks white when your heart is white, and everything you see looks black when your heart is black. Everything you see looks good when your heart is good. If you good at if you are good at telling lies, you think others lie too. But if your heart is full of love, even the one whom you cannot understand at all looks lovely to you. No matter what kind of weak points he has, you will not dislike him. Even if he practices evil to you, there is no hatred against him within you. This spiritual patience is found in the heart of the Lord, who does not break off a battered reed and will not put out a smoldering wick. This heart of patience is also found in Stephen, who prayed, Lord, do not hold this sin against them for those who were stoning him to death because he was preaching the gospel. Stephen preached the gospel, but people didn't like it because the gospel revealed their sins. Moreover, Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Even though they tried to see the heavens open up, they couldn't see. There are many who can see the heavens opened in this church. There are false accusations about it, even though they were written in the Bible. Stephen saw the heavens opened and he knew he wasn't supposed to say that, but it was true. So he said that he saw. He said what he saw. When Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God, they stoned him to death. Was it difficult for Jesus to love sinners? No, at all. His heart was the truth itself. 
Peter once asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Peter asked Jesus being a big person, since he suggests forgiving seven times, not just four or five times, he thought he was being a big person. When Peter asked the Lord, do you want me to forgive him up to seven times? Jesus answered him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. This does not mean that we have to forgive up to 490 times. Number seven means perfection. So when Jesus told him to forgive up to 70 times seven, it means to forgive someone completely. This conversation proves that our Lord Jesus has limitless mercy and forgiveness. You cannot change hatred into love in a single day. You have to continuously do your best to change so. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 says, Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. If you get angry, you are said to be in the first or second level of faith or at the earlier stage of the third level of faith. If you get angry, you have to know that you are in the first or second level of faith. You haven't reached the third level of faith yet. Some elders get angry at something that looks like a small thing to me. For example, an elder wanted to build a house somewhere, but his neighbor was against him even though he didn't break the law. I heard the elder got angry and had a fight with the neighbor. Like this, there are elders and mommin who still have anger. Some servants of God seem not to have anger outwardly, but they don't endure anger inwardly. A servant of God who teaches the Word of God should not be like this. Please, elders, do not get angry. Even though your opinions are not agreeable with each other, even in God's work, do not be angry. Do not burst out into anger. If you don't get angry, your hands are supposed to be still. But when you get angry, your hands go up during conversation. It doesn't mean hitting. But your hands and fingers move around. When you become angrier, both hands go up, then both hands are shaken, and your body starts to shake. It shows that you are enduring anger. If you think this applies to you, just bear it in mind and throw it away. Pull the anger out. Only when you achieve sanctification, you can receive blessings. No matter how much you sow, God waits for the right time. When you really cast off untruth and go into spirit, God gives you blessings. If you truly love God, you have to throw away all untruthful attributes and go into spirit. Then all things that you sowed will be brought as 30, 60, and 100-fold blessings. Even if you get angry because your faith is yet weak, you must not harbor anger until the sun goes down but throw it away. If you harbor anger until the sun goes down, it means you are just at the second level of faith. Suppose you are at the third level of faith. You don't have a reason to harbor anger all day long, not even for a moment. You have to ceaselessly do your best to throw away untruthful attributes in accordance with the level of your faith. If you have thrown away all kinds of untruthful attributes, there will be no evil within you and you will not hold anger in you at all. Then you will never get angry. Brothers and sisters, will you have to be patient in heaven? In heaven, there are no tears, no sorrow, and no pain. Because there is no evil at all but goodness and love in heaven, you will not hate anyone or get angry. So you won't have to suppress your emotions trying to be patient. When you go to heaven, many of the words you use on earth will be discarded. 
you won't use them at all. Hatred? You don't use such a word because no one hates other people because we don't need to endure. The words like jealousy and envy will disappear and other fleshly words will disappear too. Why? In heaven no one will envy and no one will be jealous. For these reasons, many words used on earth will be discarded when we go to heaven. We wouldn't be using them. Our God doesn't have to be patient with anything because He is love itself. The reason that the Bible says that love is patient is because as men we have a soul and mental frameworks, so God wants to help us understand. So the more goodness one has, the fewer things he has to be patient with. What about you? You've got only a few to be patient with now. As much as you accomplish spiritual love, you can easily endure those who have weaknesses and peacefully wait for them to change. If you still have to be patient with someone, please hold fast the words of truth and rely on the love of God so that you can endure and overcome everything. Then your heart will be filtered through the truth and you can grow in spiritual love. The sinful natures hidden within your heart can be thrown away only if, only when you pray fervently filled with the Spirit. At the same time, you have to endeavor to look at the person whom you once hated with the eyes of love. Through this process, hatred will disappear and you will come to love him. You will feel so happy as if you are in heaven. Jesus said in the second half of Luke chapter 17, verse 21, For, behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. People say it feels like they are in heaven when they are so happy. Similarly, the kingdom of heaven being in your midst refers to you having cast off all untruthful attributes and filled with truth and love. Then you don't have to be patient, since you are always happy and joyful because you love everyone around you. Evil collapses before goodness. Most evil men are touched by goodness. There is a son whose father is very rich, but his father didn't want to financially help his son. I think his father didn't trust his son. Still, the father helped his son a little, buying a building and invested in his son's business. But the son's business di didn't go successfully, and he came to see me one day. And he said that he was afraid that his father would ask him to give the building back. So the son wanted to sell the building and take the money. He requested me to pray so that he could sell the building. I advised him to give the building back to his father if he wanted. Even if he, your father gave it to you, if he wants, just give him back. Then your father will be touched and think, Oh, I didn't trust him before, but I was wrong. Even though this building is a great asset to my son, when I ask him to give it back to me, he's willing to give it back to me. So he will repent that he hasn't trusted his own son. I explained that his father would be touched like this. I didn't ask the son how he did, but I don't think he followed my advice. If he had, he would have received lots of blessings because God saw his goodness. His business would have gone well too. When, he cho when we choose goodness, God will help us. Our Father God never forgets your good deeds, but repays you for whatever you have done. Moreover, He makes His kingdom more prosperous through the good deeds of His children. 
The members of Mamin and I have been wrongfully accused and persecuted since the foundation of the church. That is because I manifested signs, wonders, and the power of God. We have not condemned the persecutors according to the law of the world, but instead we've treated them with goodness and patience just the way God tells us to love our enemies. Remaining silent against the wicked seemed to be foolish and a loss, but our Father God has brought amazing works of the Holy Spirit and revival to this church. Let me conclude the message, brothers and sisters. Our Father God really loves and rejoices with His children who, pra who practice patience and love to the evil. It is because God is the God of love as written in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God hopes that even the wicked will change, and He sends the wicked both sunshine and rain as well. He is the God of mercy and unfailing love. If you repay evil for evil, you are found to be wicked, as said in Psalm chapter 37, verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing. So you don't have to complain. It will make you an evil person. Verse 9, For evil doers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. If you forgive and love wicked people with patience, fixing your eyes on God who will reward you, you will inherit a beautiful dwelling place in the heavenly kingdom. Therefore, I pray that all of you make this message your hope and fill your heart with spiritual love. May many souls who do not believe in and know true love come to feel the love of our Father God and return to the bosom of our Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let us pray thinking over the message. Hallelujah, Sarangago, 